Hi, this is Jay. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more. Enjoy. The reliable water source means large herds live here all year round. Although drinking from the river is not without risk. As well as being a bringer of life, the river is host to hundreds of huge, stealthy crocodiles. Muscles tire, and the zebra gets lucky, safe in the herd. But he will have to return to the river to drink. And there are other predators who know this. This lioness gets closer here than she ever could in open grassland. It's a bold strategy. she's paid the price. Her left front foot has been twisted on the uneven ground. An injury like this could mean the end of her hunting days. A sentence to death by starvation. but she can put weight on it. Hopefully rest is all she needs. Thompson's gazelles frequently try to cross the river, driven by an instinct to seek out new pasture. This is disastrous. The crocodiles squabble over the tiny gazelles. But not for much longer. The dry season is coming. And that means an army is on the way. One and a half million wildebeest are on the march. They are joined by 350,000 gazelles and 200,000 zebras. It's the largest mammal migration on Earth. They've spent the wet season in the short grass plains of the Serengeti. Once the rains stop, the grasslands are soon exhausted. So these two million grazers head north to seek out the long grass plains. After 100 kilometers in the blistering heat, they're almost there. Only the Mara blocks their path. On its own, a 250 kilo wildebeest is a powerful animal. In a group, 
they're almost unstoppable. the crocodiles. The thousands that survive the river crossing can finally feast on the red oat grasslands. But they're not the only ones thinking about food. Five hundred lions call the Masai Mara home the second highest lion density in Africa. Family prides are made up of five or six related females with assorted males on the periphery. They time their breeding so that when the herd arrive, their cubs are adolescents, an age when their appetite is at its greatest. And lions are not the only predators. But the arduous migration means the herd gets good grazing all year round. The numbers are truly vast. With so much prey to choose from, the lions are in no hurry. Now they can get close to their quarry without being seen. will feed the whole family. The huge number of predators has little impact on the herd. It's the well-watered plains they rely on. Without them, the migration circle would be broken. Without the Mara, the huge herds could not exist. As things are, the plains are packed with wildebeest. And at the start of the dry season, more arrive every day. Sandbanks offer the perfect place for hippos to take a nap. Secretary birds comb the grass for snakes. They're joined by migrating wildebeest. Some spend the whole dry season here, shunning the crowds that gather to the north. Crocodiles are plentiful here as well, and just as large as those upriver. Which is why younger crocs keep to ponds. Bad-tempered adults could do serious damage to one another if not for their thick armor-like skin. Fish are smaller in the ponds, but they're free from fighting adults. By October, most of the females have laid eggs in nests on the banks, and these need guarding. 
they lose all interest in food. Not so this Nile monitor lizard. The banks are popular hunting ground for egg thieves. So for days on end, the females lie by their nests, unmoving. It takes the threat of being stood on by an elephant to break her resolve. Once unguarded, it's not long before a Nile monitor finds the cache. He has to work fast to dig them out. He only stops digging to listen out for a returning, irate mother. He's got one. It's time to leave. Once the nest has been opened, there's an opportunity for other scavengers. Like this slender mongoose. The crocodile doesn't return. She's abandoned this brood. When the monitor returns, he can take his time. He's so bold he swallows the egg while still in the nest. When the Mara leaves the Serengeti, it passes through fields and pastures. But soon it stops behaving like a savanna river. It begins to twist and turn sharply and creates a new habitat. An abundance of tropical woodland clings to the winding river. This forms a dense, hostile rainforest similar to the Congo the impenetrable nature of the swamp and swarms of malaria-carrying mosquitoes have kept this area free of human activity. The wilderness belongs to the wildlife. Large numbers of snakes have also helped keep people at bay. Even chameleons were feared, believed to be poisonous. So the birds have the good fishing all to themselves. African fish eagles. Today, some fishermen brave the labyrinth of the swamp. Only small canoes can make it through. So they need to keep an eye out for crocodiles. wet season, fish are plentiful. It's worth braving the swamp. In the dry season, catches are small, certainly not enough to make a living.
So, many have cleared land on which to farm. Every year, fires eat further into the ancient forest. This creeping settlement of the Lower Mara has been accelerating. In the 1950s, the area was uninhabited. Like the Serengeti, it could have become a stunning national park. But now, it's too late. Too many want the water of the Mara. After 290 kilometers, the Mara reaches a chain of mountains. The river spreads to create a massive swamp before emptying into Lake Victoria. The land here is also being eyed longingly for agriculture. But the problems at this end of the river are not the biggest the Mara faces. Changes in the headlands could threaten its existence. In 1995, this was a thick canopy of treetops that stretched from one horizon to the other. These fields ate into the Mao forest, unchecked by the Kenyan government. In 1902, the Mao Plateau was protected as a water catchment area. Despite this, it's been suffering deforestation since the 1970s. Of the original 4,000 square kilometers of pristine forest, only half remains. Until recently, it was common in Kenya to buy political favors with public land. Parts of the Mao forest fell into private ownership. This fertile land was sold to smallholders who cleared it to plant crops they could sell. Without the shade from the trees, the ground dries out. Valuable topsoil gets washed away by the rain. For these families, this move meant investing all their savings. Their hope is to build a better long-term future. But for all their hard work, they'll need the land to stay fertile. And that's unlikely. pours freely into the valley from the Mao forest. The forest that soaked up the rains and released the water gradually is no longer there. Kenyan scientists take regular readings of flow rates and the results are alarming. The water flow is fluctuating much more than it ever has. What's more, 60,000 tons of fertile soil washes into the river every year. It's a lot for the Mara to deal with. And there are new demands on the river. Large-scale agriculture is on the increase, fueled by the dependable Mara River. In dry years, 25% of the water has been taken to service farming. If every farm applying for water received permission, this would rise to 70%. The deforestation upstream means water levels now drop sharply in the dry season. 
Even the farms high up the river cannot depend on the Mara as they used to. This combination of decimated forest and huge farms threatens every ecosystem downstream. In the dry season, animals are naturally drawn to the river. When the levels are this low, Grant's gazelles can easily wade across. It's just a few centimeters deep. They're semi-desert dwellers and have probably never seen a crocodile, which gives the crocs a chance in this shallow water. Levels as low as this used to be unusual, but this is now a typical dry season. By December, wildebeest crisscross the river, seeking out the last of the good grazing. The Mara is no longer the barrier it was. The crocodiles are much easier to avoid. they do well just to avoid being trampled in the mayhem. The delicate Thompson's gazelles are also drawn to the river. The instinct to cross in search of new grazing remains strong. The gazelles are cautious, but the crocodiles seem disinterested. Eventually, one of the females braves the water's edge. The water is too low for crocodiles to get close enough unseen. But there's a narrow channel in the middle of the river that's still deep enough to house a hungry croc. If the gazelle can keep solid ground beneath its hooves, it will be too quick for the crocodiles. More of the gazelles pluck up courage. The little antelope seem to be winning. But the crossing is attracting more crocs. The gazelles are growing in confidence. So are their hunters. Incredibly, the rest of the group continue with their crossing as the armored giants devour their companion. It's like the crocs are just tree trunks. The successful strike lures yet more crocodiles. The remaining gazelle seem undeterred. And they pay a high price. dead in 10 seconds. 
Whether the river is high or low, the crocodiles always prosper. Every year, the Mara sinks deeper into its riverbed. The mud basins grow larger. Thin trickles of water weave through rocks. The Mara is sick. this be its future? If the Mara stops flowing in the dry period, it would be catastrophic. Millions of animals depend on it during this time. The spectacle of the migration brings tourists to the Masai Mara. In the high season, dozens of planes land every day. The hotels are full. 200,000 visitors a year come to take in the spectacle of the largest mammal migration on the planet. Tourism has become a vital industry in East African countries like Kenya. Thousands of jobs and millions of dollars will be lost if the herds stop coming. It's a financial pressure that works in the Mara's favor. Thankfully, the Kenyan government is now fighting the previous culture of corruption. Clearances that were widespread are being halted. Land titles sold illegally are no longer recognized. In 2005 alone, 10,000 settlers were evicted. It's been a controversial decision. These are normal people who are working hard to build a better future. Although they did nothing wrong, those dreams have come to nothing. They leave behind desolate, overgrown small holdings. Once so full of promise, now security guards patrol ruins to stop smallholders returning. It's been a hard decision to make, for in the short term, everyone loses, especially the poorest. and the forest has been devastated. But time is a great healer. The forest will eventually reclaim this land. And a line has been drawn. Short-term gain cannot be allowed to cause long-term catastrophe. The pressure on government to allow development is high in any country. For a poor country like Kenya, Resisting economic growth is even tougher. 
Stopping the encroachment has been a massive achievement. It's a debate that will continue. These people are battling for compensation. But for now, the Mao forest has been given a reprieve. And the Mara continues to flow. The crocodiles continue about their business. Beneath the sun-baked earth, baby crocodiles call to their mother. One at a time, she lifts them tenderly into her mouth, without a scale being harmed. They needed their mother's help to escape the hard clay, and they'll need her protection for several weeks. To the other crocodiles, they're a tasty morsel. It's a harsh introduction to the river. Some of the brood seem to have gone astray. The mother quickly rounds them up. She misses some because more of her babies are hatching and she can't leave them for long. These baby crocs don't know how the Mara used to be or what its future holds. Their race is millions of years older than the Mara and will be around for millions of years to come. They have proven themselves as great survivors. Can we change our ways and create a dynasty as great as the crocodiles? The fight to keep the Mara flowing is not about a single species, or even a single river. It's a fight to save one of the last great ecosystems on Earth, and to save its spectacular migration. The survival of these herds will not be decided by predators. All those that depend on the Mara must cease doing battle and learn to share her gift of water. Has mankind learned that lesson in time?